Hello again, my mental snack food craving friends. This is Devin bringing you another version of a previous topic. <laughs> Today's discussion is going to be on lesson number one in the progression of learning. However, we're going to revisit it. We're going to spend more time explaining lesson number one and the impact that it has on our life. Now, before we begin, I just want to make a note that this work does contain some drawn medical-based images that some people may find disturbing, just so you're aware. Now, to begin, we need to look way back to the very starting point of life and see what's there. Well, as you can see, or maybe not, okay, hold on a sec, maybe this will help. For you to be able to see, I guess we need to bring out the microscope and show you more of a close-up view. There, that's better. As you can see, we have an egg being bombarded by many sperm trying to get inside. This is essentially where life begins for everyone. Once the sperm enters the egg, then the magic begins to happen. First, the new cell that's created as a result of the merger begins to replicate by dividing itself into two. Those two cells then begin dividing into two more cells and so on, until we have a much bigger bundle of cells. This process continues to happen until all those cells begin to take on the form of a human fetus. Somewhere in the process, this new life slowly begins to gain the ability to comprehend. In the beginning, there's very little happening. However, over time, a sensation begins to be understood. A bit. As more time passes, that new sensation begins to transform. Slowly, it begins to change more into a feeling, and from there, it also begins to connect to a sound, one that's actually very rhythmic in nature. Of course, we know what that sound is. To the unborn child, however, there's no understanding. In fact, there's only a small amount of awareness of any kind at this stage in our lives. As time moves on, the small unborn baby continues to grow. Somewhere along the way, they actually begin to understand some things. They actually begin to have a very basic awareness. As before, with the sound of the mother's heartbeat, the awareness comes slowly. This would be somewhat like soaking in a tub of hot water. Eventually, you realize the water got cold as if it just happened. In the beginning, the awareness is very small in general. However, with more time, it begins to become more defined, in a way. There's no amazing blossoming of awareness. It all happens slowly. Eventually, this new life will begin to experience the world around them. At this point, that world is very small indeed, consisting only of mummy's tummy and some stray sounds from the outside. Over time, the unborn baby will begin to realize that they can feel something when the strange flappy things move. Eventually, there will also be a realization that it's a part of them, an arm, a leg, whatnot. Shortly thereafter, there will also be an awareness that this child has the ability to move that flappy thing at will. It doesn't respond very well, but it does move when want it to, and that's a huge step in the right direction. At some point in all this discovery, the unborn baby will begin to also realize that the world they find themselves in disappears when they close their eyes or goes to sleep. Over time, that understanding will expand to include everything around them. When they want to move, they move. When they go to sleep, the world ceases to exist, and much, much more. That awareness will continue to evolve until such time as this little one begins to realize that all of that is happening at their own will. They are making the arms and legs move. They are sending the world away to sleep. When this sinks in, it becomes obvious that this still unborn person is in total control of their entire world. After all, to them, there is nothing else. This is their universe, and they are in charge of what happens in it. That will continue for a very long time indeed, up until the time of birth, actually. To this very tiny person, it would have been that way for as long as they could remember, which to them was an eternity. After the rather traumatic transition from their safe warm world to this unknown open one, entirely new things begin to happen. There are these large things that hover about and make weird noises. 
Oddly enough, the newborn baby will also quickly realize that they too are making some strange new noises. Even odder still, as they make each of their own strange noises, the large unknown things react to it. Even more amazing, there is all sorts of new sensations that baby has never had before, many of which include the continued making of those strange noises, which of course we know to be crying. Yet, the most amazing thing of all, when Baby makes certain noises, the large things rush into action to try and remove the unpleasant sensations that Baby may have, like hungry, dirty, etc. In the middle of all this new discovery, there is still the same familiar events, too. Like when go to sleep, the world still ceases to exist, even this big one that we now find ourselves in. No matter what happens, at this point in our development, we firmly believe that I am the center of the universe. Not out of arrogance or control, but because everything says that's the way that it is. We as a species don't actually come equipped with an idea or desire to learn what control is all about. These are things we learn from the others around us. Control comes from the adults, not from child. And thus, we continue our happy existence. Everything we want and need is provided by the big things now known as parents. There is nothing to do but learn, explore, and discover more things. Then one day, everything begins to change. The parents no longer provide everything at a whimper. It now takes more for them to come running. At this point, the world begins to change. This is also the point that parents begin to give their baby more freedom, making sure not to come running at every sound so baby can learn that they are okay, that they don't need parents for everything. Up until that point, they had been the undisputed master of their universe. Now every time baby turns around, someone is working to dispute their claim as captain. Remember, this isn't about control. It just defies all that baby understands. And it takes time to rebuild their understanding to meet the new current demands of this new life they are now experiencing. At this point, they don't know the rules, or know which way is up for that matter. Their whole existence has been turned upside down and they have to relearn how everything works. This is the point in life that we start learning things from those around us. Things like what we need to do to get what we want. There are some great things happening, it just takes time to understand them. Eventually, Baby also begins to discover that certain actions or sounds get really interesting results from the parents. They have no idea what they're doing in the beginning, but it sure is awful fun to watch. Most adults often take events such as those to be defiance, like baby shaking their head or using the word no. In the beginning, they have no idea what that means. They're simply copying those around them. Eventually, there begins to be an understanding of what those movements, sounds, and more mean. However, they're often still fun to do because of the show that goes along with them. To a child, watching mom or dad have a fit over something they don't like is really entertaining. Over time, they will likely realize that there is also a punishment involved that is by no means entertaining anymore. Understand, this is the way young children learn. They do things and see what happens. Sometimes these things are fun and they will do a lot more of them because they were fun. And sometimes they aren't fun and they won't do them again. The problem comes when it's sometimes fun and sometimes isn't. When this happens, the child doesn't know what to think and has no idea what to do with the situation. So they'll test occasionally to see if it's fun again. If it isn't fun, then they'll wait and try again later because sometimes it is fun. If it was fun, then they'll continue to do it. After all, it was fun. This process will continue until it's no longer fun anymore, or it gets boring. In the process of all this discovery, they also learn what the parents do when they do whatever they do. This then creates the blueprints from which the young child will begin to construct their view of the world. And on that note, we'll end part one and continue again in part two. See you there!